Okay, let's do another tutorial. Today we're going to do one on using ControlNet for video. Specifically, this one is going to be something you can use for a WAN 2.1 workflow, which I'm going to actually build into for the video after this. But for this one, we're going to concentrate specifically on ControlNet. This is going to be a continuation on ControlNet. And technically, you could do this actual, utilize this ControlNet thing before even one 2.1 was a thing so which is it with video upload or load video upload that's good right there okay and well since that loaded up we're just going to use that one and this is actually an image that i turned into a video too this is a video generation itself also i do know that there's some people who might have some trouble even though i'm not going to be using this in this workflow because this is just a part of it but this was the new thing that was updated, the one fun control to video. Some people are having trouble, I think, loading this particular node up. And you won't be able to get this through a uh, missing nodes type of thing because this is this is Comfy UI native. So you're gonna have to update your Comfy UI. And if you might be having trouble updating your Comfy UI, I do have something on my Patreon that you can, it's a video that you can watch for free that tries to solve that issue and if you still have that issue even after the solution i provide on there you can talk to me directly on there too if you want some answers on how to make that work um but that's specifically because of this new you know one 2.1 fun lores thing where it came out and some people can't figure out how to get it to work so if you're having that issue please patreon's in my description of this video so check that out but for this one we're going to concentrate specifically on the control net part of that workflow because I wanted to focus in on what we can do in simple control net stuff and not, you know, the whole entire workflow. Because I feel like if I just explain this part, you'll see how easy this part is, the control net part. And then it won't make the bigger workflow look so big. Simplifying kind of like math or something like that, right? So I'm going to use the same preprocessor I used in the original control net video, the one before this that was just talking about flux images. You can still utilize this. There's really no difference between this and doing it for video because what is a video except for a bunch of images combined in succession or consecutively, right? It's the same thing. So why wouldn't it work? It will. And I'll show you right here that it will work. Just this alone. And I put let's put the limit on this because I don't want to do every frame. Otherwise, it'll take too long, I guess. But yeah, 30 frame low cap, ba 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 and frame rate is 16. Okay. Mm. Now it takes a little bit of time to do this because the, the DW preprocessor or the, the pose control, that's what this is for. It takes a little bit to load all this stuff in there because it's video, right? But it will do this no matter what type you use. There's other ones you could use too, like, it's, you know, there's the control net preprocessor thing. I usually don't even use that one. But there's another one I think that other people would use. It has a little bit more options to it, but I barely ever use those options. Oh no, there's one specifically for this. Uh, that's what I'm thinking of, the DW Pose Estimator. But the only thing I don't why, why I don't want to use this one is because it only does DW Pose. Now, if you really are specific about the pose you want and how what you want it to detect, then I could I would say just use this. But if you don't care, if you just wanted to just try to detect all these things and you're not gonna change any of this stuff right here, just use this. <laughs> I mean, that's all you really need. You don't need to have all this if you're not actually gonna modify any of this. Especially since what I'm gonna do is I wanna make a composite of this. So I'm gonna clone this while it keeps going here. And yes, it does take a minute. <laughs> and I'm gonna build this out from here. I also want it to look at, I think this is it, line art standard preprocessor. I'm gonna, I want to look at this because I want to also be able to make it so that it shows both, even though this is probably not a good image or a video for this because it has all this stuff in the background. This would be better if you could isolate it because what's this is automatically going to isolate just for the pose of the person but this is not gonna isolate for that. It's gonna do any type of line work that it sees. It's the only downside about trying to do this thing where I'm trying to capture some of like the shape of the armor or whatever to use as more guides. 
So if I really wanted to do this, I would take out the background of this, which is something that can be done as well. But I'm not going to focus in on that because that's kind of another tutorial. <laughs> there you have it. The DW Pro's preprocessor here is showing you image by image, which makes it turn into a video and it was actually saved it as a video as well. Now, what I want to do with this is create the line art for it. So I'll just show you what that is real quick. This, pre -pro this process is a whole lot faster than the post thing. Now, that's not quite how I want it. Yeah, let's go with the line art process. I think that one's better. This captures it better. Yeah, that one I like. So as you can see, it's, it's getting some of the line work, which gives you more of an outline of the character. I know some people use the canny thing, I think, too. You can try the canny edge. And there's also that other one. Pi. There's so many of these, so many different ways. Again, this is the real reason why I like to use this one, because it gives you the you know a larger variety of like things you can put into the, the scope of what you're doing and whichever works for you for the situation you want. But for me right now, I just like the line art pre processor thing. I think any line art works well too. But we're gonna go with this one just for the sake of this. So question is, how do I combine these things together, right? That's what we gotta do. Well, there's a lot of stuff you can do with this thing called the, the layer utility ones. Now, there's one called image blend. There's one called image blend advanced. I don't think we need the advanced one for what we're trying to do. So we're just going to go with image blend. So this, it does exactly what it says it's going to do. So I want this to be on top. So I'm going to put it on layer image and I want the line art to be on the bottom, which is going to be the background. So the one on top, the layer image one, that's the opacity that you're adjusting. So if you put this at 55, it'll be slightly more dark or opaque on top. And then we're gonna put this through images and we get the thing on the other side. I know it's probably mix match because of the way this, I don't know why the background image thing is at the top. It's the background, should it be at the bottom? Anyways, I'm gonna put it on normal blend mode even though there's a bunch of different modes on here. You can be the judge of which one you want like the best. And we are gonna keep invert mask on even though I haven't seen it cause too much of a difference and how this output works, but let's just go with it. So there, as you can see, we have both one layered on top of the other. Although right now looking at it, the line art is a little bit vague, right? It's a little bit too in the background. So another, it's another layer utility thing I can use here. How about if I just type in contrast? Oh, it might be layer color. Yeah, okay. But it's still part of the, the similar thing. So yeah, let's go with the version 2. As you can see, they both have these big highlighted things on it. So we want this one. We want to adjust the contrast on it, not the brightness. And I'm going to filter this back in to here. And I'm just going to push it up. Let's go 1.85. Alright, so this will boost the contrast of those lines and make them show up a little bit better. The lines you see now, they're more a little bit more apparent. And now you can see them both. Although now I kind of feel like <laughs> maybe they're too, maybe it's too much. Uh, let's take it down. 1.7. This is 1.7. I don't want it to clash too much. But I don't want it to be like a, a this kind of tug of war where I keep pushing up the opacity of the other one. So that way you can see it better. And then the other one, like, that's what I feel like I'm doing now. I'm just doing this weird tug of war. Which one do I see better? Okay. Maybe that's a good how good. Anyways, you can adjust it to fit your knees. But the idea is that you can get a little bit of the line work as well as the pose at the same time if you wanted it. Because you notice stuff like if you want those pigtails to be a certain kind of way in the movement or something like that, or if you want these armor to be a certain type of thing that you don't want to be disrupted that much, this is a great way to add it back in. But you can also do other things. Like you, you don't have it doesn't have to be just line art, you know, it could be any of these. You, know, you put the depth thing in there as well. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this kind of thing. But the idea is that there's so much stuff you could do to bring it together to help guide the stuff with ControlNet.
But there's also something else you might want to add into this, and I'm just going to put it as an option, and that's the resize. You don't necessarily need this, but you never know when you might want to resize something. So, so need, see now you have the depth, anything that's kind of trying to resolve a little bit of stuff with the depth, but you also get the idea of the DW pose thing at the same time, because that really helps guide the character to where you want it to be. So. And actually it works a little bit better for this particular one because you see it doesn't record all the other stuff with the line work in the background. And you can adjust the contrast and the brightness as well to make it do more what you want so as well as the saturation. So good thing to have these nodes, all of these like ones by the comfy layer style, comfy UI layer style, there's some of the best like utility stuff you can think of. They even have something I think for that deals with memory. Like I think there's one for VRAM too. Where VRAM, I think there's one for them. Yep, purge VRAM. There's so much stuff that you can really do to help out your machine. I, I highly recommend stuff with the layer style stuff. Really look into all the possibilities with that because it could probably help you a lot with a lot of your, your workflow stuff. But as far as this resize image thing, I think this may be beneficial if you're having something where you need to resize. I can't imagine exactly what you would want to resize right now but it does come in handy and it takes so many different inputs from image sizing right so you can get it directly from the image so technically like let's say if we just connected it from here to the the end process right here you can just do it like this if you do it this way by itself what's going to do is it's going to prioritize this the get image size i believe this input is prioritized before before anything else and then the second is this one and then the last one is your inputs from here so if you do it without the get image size it's going to utilize 512 by 512 so it's going to make everything here get squished here yeah, like this by 512 because the original I think video info for this let's see show any I don't know exactly what it is but I know it ain't a freaking square <laughs> Yes, the info for this says it is 1264 by 720 on the width. So it ain't 512 by 512. So instead of like having to type that in, which you could do, just take the get image size, connect your image to that, and then it'll just convert it automatically. But of course, as you can see, we didn't need to do that. It's only I think this is really helpful if you need to resize the image for some reason for whatever reason, like you would come out and have some other input. That's why you would do this. If you don't need to resize the image, it's just going to take whatever input you have. And one thing is for sure though, whatever these two things are coming from, if they're coming from two different sources, the image size does need to match for it to run through like the image blend thing. It won't be able to run through unless even the resolution, if I make a different resolution on this one, it's not going to be able to run through here on this thing. So keep that in mind. I'm going to just add this in here and I'm going to leave this to show anything on here just because it's just to me, like it's an underused node that really is beneficial for like just knowing what's coming out. Like it's the, the frame rate of this is 25, but I kept the output at 16, right? I think it's just easier to work with for me. But anyways. That's a side topic. This to me is a very simple workflow. I added in a few things. This may not be necessary for you, but I'm going to keep it in there just in case you might need to use it. This will connect. You will see how we will use this. This will be used as an input for another video, which will be the complete thing where we use one 2.1 to actually create a new video based upon this control net. That's all I got for you guys today. You can find this workflow for free on Patreon. I hope you this was informative. I hope you guys can find out really cool things to do with this, as I know I will. And I hope you have a wonderful day.